tagged sunlight and made it slow down. And they proved that Einstein was correct, that the speed of light doesn't change. But actually, they were wrong. They were just right with their current instrumentation. OK, doctor. Uh, uh, some of your expertise has to do with space time. How close are we as the human race in mastering or, or traveling uh, or starting to travel through time? Are we, are we fairly close with that? Because if we are within my lifetime, I'm 42, I wouldn't mind going back and stopping myself as a young man of 19 and telling myself, don't date her, that's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can go back and do that already. Uh, physically, uh, as far as we know, time travel uh, is not physically possible. In other words, you can't jump in a capsule and go back to 1959 with a DeLorean. But uh, mentally, humans are the only being on the Earth that's capable of doing it. And we do affect the past, which does affect the present and thus the future. I will say to you this, if time travel exists 100,000 years from now, it exists right now. Because those travelers will come back to this day. They're already here. Could that be uh, who the greys are for the, the uh, aliens that they say that, that, that are greys? Could they be actually us uh, 100,000 years ago that uh, actually uh, had their DNA manipulated? Uh, in one form or another, either through bioengineering from the Illuminati or from these gamma rays that are coming in from space? I think part of that makes sense. Uh, it makes sense that they are genetically manipulated beings. Uh, from what evidence that I have seen and tes testimony I have seen, what I've seen what I've noticed is that the greys do not really have a strong will of their own. They're more of a programmed, kind of a point-and-shoot being. That there's a much higher being with higher intelligence, with more level of planning, that may be commanding the greys, both the short ones and the tall ones. And that, that's what I surmise from the greys. I think, based on the evidence of, of Sumeria, of the Mayans, of the Egyptians, of, uh, of the Babylonians and even, uh, even other writings like American Indians, that there are off-worlders that have been on this planet for a long, long time. They're not large in number, but they are having their influence. Wow. Okay. Uh, also, you're going to be going uh, to the North Pole for an expedition in July. Would you like to tell our, our listeners about that? That's not going to happen this year, and it's not going to happen next year. We're shooting for 2012. I'll tell you why. There, in uh, 2006, actually 2005, I joined the expedition, and I was on the gyroscope team and on the general planning team. And in 2006, very unexpectedly, uh, Stephen Curry passed away. So I was nominated to be the expedition leader in 2006, and I was a duck out of water, but I gave it my best shot. Uh, the first thing we did is we returned everybody's money to them that had already put money into the expedition because it was shaping up like a tourist trip. And we realized that it had to be a scientific expedition. So we returned all the money to the people that had invested. And we started over as a scientific expedition. 2007, we started raising money for 2008. 2008 happened to be the worst economy that we've seen in my lifetime. And uh, so we did not. We were not able to raise any money in 2008. We resumed trying to raise money in 2009. We were somewhat successful. We published a film, and did some other things. Uh, we uh, did a 13-city tour and, and talked to 100,000 people face to face. We got some film producers interested. We, our pilot film, won the Genes of Galileo contest in Tokyo, Japan. So we did rather well, but. We were not able to raise enough money to reserve the boat for 2010. So in that time, the Yamal, which was the nuclear-powered icebreaker that we originally planned on taking, has been retired. It's too old and uh, it needs to be retired. The only civilian ship left on Earth that can make this trip is the Captain Kalibnikov, and it will be retired in the late summer of 2012. So 
we have a, a year and a half to raise two million dollars to charter that ship and make our expedition happen. If we don't, it will never ever occur. And there's no way you can fly and and perhaps land where you need to go. Uh, in 2007, the ice shelf broke open for the first time in 200,000 years. This area of the Earth has never been sailed before uh, by humans anyway, and it's never been seen before by human eyes at sea level. It has been flown over as low as 2,500 feet by Admiral Byrd, but that's why he's an aviation hero. Uh, the lowest we can get a plane to fly these days over it is 17,000 feet. We won't see anything from 17,000 feet. One flight costs $35,000 and it's done at 475 miles an hour. Well, yeah, I guess that kind of limits your ability to see things <laughs> when you're talking yeah, that kind of speed at that height. <clears throat> or what do you expect to find when, you, when and if you get there? Well, we've got to be prepared to find everything. Uh, there's no resupply ship. There's no rescue ship. We're it. So when we sat down and said, what are we likely to see, besides whales and ice, uh, we might see a sea vent where one ocean's leaking into our ocean. We might see a variety of sea life, microbial and more complex. We might see very strong magnetic fields that uh, we don't pick up anywhere else on the planet. We might see the legendary uh, oceanic depression leading to an opening into the inner Earth. We might see a large contingent of UFO cities that are sitting on the bottom of the ocean up there. There has not been a boat ever sailed this area. They've been undisturbed up there for 200,000 years. There's never what? been a ship shadow cross over this part of the ocean. Even, even uh, say, uh, U U.S. nuclear submarines, they've never crossed under that ice or anything like that before? Yes, they have. But as far as I know, there are no windows in submarines, so they would not have seen anything. And uh, they only use the sonar uh, to avoid uh, collisions. And believe it or not, submarines can only go about three or 400 feet deep. They are, they're not deep water vessels. So the ho this hollow earth theory, how did, how did that come about? Uh, the first evidence that I saw of it was in the crypts of Dendera, which is, sits below modern-day Dendera. This was originally built by the Hathors. It's since been buried and then re-dug out, and another temple's been built on top of it, and then the Romans built next to it. Inside that crypt, there is a story of um, traveling to an, the inner Earth, the inside of the planet, and some power sources that were built as a result of that. The next evidence that I see is in 1629, Edmund Haley, Edmund Halley believed in a hollow earth. He published many, many papers on it. And he also predicted that Halley's comet would return, which it did, and it was subsequently named after him posthumously. The next one was a Stephen Gardner, and he actually lost his life in 1965 uh, looking for the inner earth opening. He caught pneumonia and died. And then, of course, we have the uh, legendary flight in 1926 of Admiral Byrd. Now, there's been a lot of speculation about that. I have not been able to verify or validate any of that speculation. But the verbal account that he did fly across lush green fields and liquid water and tropical trees, and there definitely shouldn't have been any there not where he was flying. I have pictures of when he took off and when he landed, and it was definitely uh, about uh, 50 below zero when he left. And is that is that's on record of him saying that? Uh, it's only verbal, and this is a, only verbal accounts. He never kept a diary. He was a super patriot, and he would never divulge any information in writing that the government did not want him to divulge. He served after that, all the way through World War II, and even led uh, a major expedition after World War II. So Admiral Byrd would never, ever have done anything against uh, what the government wanted him to do. So the idea that he kept a diary is just wishful thinking. It never happened. 